Alright guys, welcome to another episode of me uh, talking about my gears and this time around there's a huge change um, that I'm making and you already probably saw it from the title of the video. I am getting rid of my Helix um, for three reasons. Number one, uh, usability. Number two, convenience. And number three, overall value. Um, I was a late comment to the Helix family. Um, not really a late comment, but fashionably late and i got my helix the helix right here i got it in the best part of 20, 2018 uh the unit originally came out in 2015 but i got i got it three years later and it's been the most amazing piece of gear that i've gotten um i got mine used i got a good deal on it i got it on ebay for like i don't know like a little over a thousand around 1200 and i have loved it ever since then um, opened my eye to an amazing world of amps uh, like some of us some amps that I would have not been able to afford at that time um, prior to me getting the Helix I had a Fender Hot Rod 3 which I used at home in the studio in church every gig I had or sometimes I will use the Twin Reverb which was like the industry standard every gig you go to they probably just have you know a jazz rivet or a Roland Jazz, uh, or they have the Twin Reverb. If you're a gigging musician, you know this. Every club has one, every event place had, had one. So that was my gear, and all my gear was geared around that amp, because I'm always ready to play into that amp. I had my compressor, my digital delay, my reverb, my overdrives, my three drive stages and all that. And all that just prepared me for that amp, or any Fender style amp that I find in any studio or any live event that I get to. Now, when I saw the Helix video comparison on YouTube, I'm not sure who did. I think it was Rachel's video that I saw when it was comparing the Marshall amp or some other video. I can't really recall, but I, the sound was just amazing. Like it sounded just like the real thing. And I'm like, you know what? I got to get one of these. So I went on eBay and I got myself a, uh, uh, a Helix and I think I paid around 1200 for it. I got a deal and I have never had any piece of gear that I've spent more time with and I've enjoyed every beat of. Um, now to the topic, why am I letting this go? Uh, it's becoming less and less practical, um, kind of becoming a dinosaur um, to me. Um, not the old Helix family, but the floor unit itself. Number one, it's gigantic. Um, the last few gigs that I played um, and I took the Helix, I, it was difficult because it was a tiny stage and putting that Helix on the floor just took a lot of real estate. And I just wished I bought my small flight rig, which was DHX Tomp, which, was, which would do exactly what the Helix floor is doing. Um, I'm not really giving up anything except some extra stuff that I, I have some magic you know, tricks on the Helix. You know, you have multiple inputs, you can have two guitars going in, you can have a microphone going in. It has way too much. And I believe, or I feel like I am underutilizing the unit. Does that make sense? Like the Helix can do so much that an average user will probably not use up to 40%. And I say it with, with all confidence. Like, are you actually using all the in and out returns? Are you using the microphone in? Are you using the MIDI capability? Um, I've seen, you know, worship setups with, uh, you know, music director who happens to be a guitar player who will have all these cues in Ableton and use the Helix as um, the MIDI controller, will change tracks, change volumes, adjust, you know, click tracks and all that stuff. So this unit is actually more than just an amp modeler and it's an all-in-one tool that a lot of people are actually underutilizing. And I fall into that category. I am underutilizing this piece of tool because that's what it is. It's a tool. And if you're not using it as much as you should, then maybe you should reconsider like myself. So I'm getting rid of it, not because it's not a good unit or I'm just not using it as much as I would like to use it. And I just feel someone else will benefit um, from that. Another reason that I'm actually getting rid of the Helix was because of my recent purchase, which is the Fender Priston Reverb. That's an amp 
that I've wanted for the longest. And I have uh, uh, a resolution like a couple of years ago about my gear collections. I have a ton of gears, guys. Like, you have no idea. Uh, this is nothing here. You need to go to my garage and see how many guitar and stuff that I have that are just not getting used. And, and I'm embracing a more minimalistic approach to music um, to only have the things that you use and that brings value to you. Pay attention to that word, that brings value and you actually get the best out of them. It's not fair that I have, you know, a $1,500 to $2,000 worth of equipment that I only bring out once or twice a year. I don't think that is value. Um, so that being said, I am going to get rid of the Helix. I already listed it on Reverb. Um, it's still an amazing unit and I'm not throwing away, um, like, look, just look at this. Look how big this is. Um, some venues that I will go to, I, this just fits right in like a big stage or, you know, a large bar or all that good stuff. It will fit right in. But the gigs that I've been playing lately, I've been really small and it, I just don't need this much. Like I, I probably just have one preset uh, pulled up on this unit and it, it probably never switched till the end of the gig. Uh, the snapshots are great, but I really don't use them that much. Uh, and that's for my own case scenario. For your case scenario, you might need multiple presets and I, it would be unfair for me to say it has not been really useful. At some point I'll be playing for multiple artists and I will have to switch between presets. This has been amazing in doing that. Snapshots, you know, running around, changing to, from synth sounds to, you know, lead guitar tones, backing tones. It's just easy to have those presets and those snapshots and you can switch easily. The Helix is good with that, but over the last couple of months or years, it's been different, uh, especially with COVID and all that stuff. A lot has changed in terms of performance, at least for me and people like myself. So. Um, I've always wanted a Prince thing and weighing the prices, they're kind of similar in price range. So in my culture of trading in gears, um, I think this is a good purchase over this because this will actually get used every day in the studio. Um, this arrived yesterday and I think I've recorded up to four tracks with this alone. So, um, whereas I don't think I would, I've ever had to pull these out um, from my garage, except for some locations where I have to play some different gig. So yeah, um, I might throw in or oh, just leave in the Helix family. No, that's not what's happening. I still have my HX dump. Matter of fact, I own two HX dumps. I have my mini flat rig, which is right here underneath. If I can just pull it up. Um, this is my flat rig. Uh, if you're familiar with this channel, you probably will have seen these. Um, this is my this does everything the big guy does, just in a smaller form. It's easy, it go, it fits directly into the mono teak, and I attach that to my guitar, and I'm ready to fly anywhere in the world with my gear without compromise. Um, so, um, and for other gigs, I have a hybrid pedal. I'll leave a video here. I built that last year. That was my 2023 pedal board, and that has you know the HX Tom still. So I'm not really leaving the family. But um, I want to start recording more of, you know, live amps for some projects that I've been working on. And it just makes sense for me to replace the Helix with a Princeton Reverb amp, in my opinion. And I'll be making more content um, with that amp right there. And the intro that you heard was that directly from that amp. And I think it sounds great. And it's a better investment for me in terms of you know, <laughs> usability and value overall. Um, so let me know what amp or what gear that you have in your closet that you've not used in the last couple of years and how you intend, you know, working with them or getting rid of them to get all the stuff that you actually use. And that goes to other musicians like myself. Like if you have a gear that you've not used for like a year or two, it's probably time for you to let them go. Um, number one, if you're not using it within that period of time, you just probably just accept their gears that you're collecting and you hoping that they might gain value. But let's be honest, it's not really what it's, you just say harder. That, that's just the truth. <laughs> and I, I was myself, and I, maybe I still am, but uh, I'm trying to, you know, have a more minimal setup and make sure I get the use out of everything that I own. 
And um, I hope this helps someone out there to make an informed decision in terms of the gears that you own and how you utilize them. Thank you. And um, if you like content like this, you can like this video and uh, share with someone that might you know, have fun with it. Peace. Another reason is, you know, I know just saying that might be a new thing coming up. Nobody knows, like you don't know. So it might just be a time to get ready for something that might be new. And you know, I want to try new stuff. So yeah. I mean, why not? The Kemper player just came out. Maybe I want to buy that too. Or maybe I just want to be a ton snob and just use the. I want to be a modular snob and just use punch thing.